Hey all, welcome to Share Trek, and this is Raj here. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And for today, I'm going to cover something that I've always been concerned about, and that is diabetes. Diabetes is a silent killer, and it is not only uh, something that destroys the quality of life of the patient, but also has an impact on the family and finances. Diabetes slowly attacks eyes, heart, kidney, every organ, and spawns additional complications which then depend on the window of opportunity when uh, blood sugar levels stabilize in order for a specialist to fix those things. So um, I, I took my early retirement mainly because uh, somewhere in my gene pool I have diabetes. So I'm trying my best to eat well, have a low stress life, do a little bit of exercise and uh, try to prevent diabetes. So uh, I'm very, very uh, invested in everything that happens in the field of diabetes. Uh, in fact, um, uh, I think uh, this particular video is going to give a lot of uh, uh, good news uh, to uh, many people who have similar concerns about diabetes uh, because uh, there is a lot of research taking place and a lot of breakthroughs that are happening and we are in the cusp of getting some really uh, fantastic uh, therapies uh, that can arrest and uh, reverse diabetes. So I'm, uh, I'm not just talking about CRISPR Therapeutics uh, and VCTX210, uh, which we have always spoken about before, but I'm also going to talk about some competition uh, with a company called as uh, Genprex that's also come up with a new approach uh, to tackle diabetes. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Diabetes is of two types. The first one is type 1 diabetes and the second one is type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes mostly occurs due to lifestyle uh, related issues but type 1 diabetes is something that is genetic and it's also known as insulin dependent diabetes or uh, juvenile diabetes. Uh, it's a chronic condition in which the pancreas produces little or no insulin and insulin is a hormone that is essential for the body to be able to use glucose or sugar for energy. Without enough insulin, glucose builds up in the bloodstream, uh, which can lead to high blood sugar levels. Uh, this can cause a variety of symptoms such as excessive th thirst, uh, frequent urination, hunger, fatigue, blurred vision, and weight loss. And also in many patients, it so happens that uh, they lose a bit of sensitivity on the uh, extreme digits and uh, they get injured in their uh, leg and uh, they don't know that they have got injured and it leads to septicism and all. Therefore, many diabetics wear protective um, uh, socks and shoes even when they are at home. So if uh, diabetes is uh, left untreated, uh, high blood sugar levels can lead to serious complications uh, like heart disease, kidney damage, nerve damage and blindness. The insulin producing cells in the pancreas are called beta cells. These cells are located in the islets of uh, Langerhans, uh, which are clusters of cells scattered throughout the pancreas. Beta, uh, beta cells produce insulin in response to rising sugar levels in the bloodstream. In people with type 1 diabetes, the immune system mistakenly attacks and destroys the beta cells. So it's an autoimmune uh, disease. This particular autoimmune response is thought to be triggered by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Although the exact cause is not yet fully understood, uh, but uh, the end result is uh, definitely appreciated uh, that it's, it's being done by the body's own immune system acting against uh, the beta cells. The immune system normally protects the body from harmful invaders like viruses and bacteria. But in type 1 diabetes, it mistakenly identifies the beta cells as foreign and attacks them. This causes inflammation and damage to the beta cells, leading to a decrease or complete loss of insulin production. As the beta cells are destroyed, the amount of insulin produced by the pancreas decreases. Eventually, the pancreas may not be able to produce enough insulin to regulate blood sugar. Uh, and um, uh, this results in high blood sugar levels, which can create a range of symptoms and complications. The destruction of beta cells in type 1 diabetes is thought to be caused by the immune system producing antibodies that attack the beta cells. These antibodies are called uh, autoantibodies. The, there are several different types of autoantibodies associated with type 1 diabetes, including antibodies to insulin, uh, glutamic acid, and uh, GAD or uh, decarbolax, uh, glutamic acid uh, decarbolase, or uh, as it's called as GAD, and 
tyrosine phosphate like uh, protein which is called as IA-2. In summary, type 1 diabetes is caused by an autoimmune response in which immune system attacks and destroys the beta cells in the pancreas, resulting in a decrease in or complete loss uh, of production of uh, insulin in the body. Type 1 disease is usually uh, diagnosed in uh, children and young adults, uh, but it can develop at any age. There is no cure for type 1 diabetes, but it can be managed with insulin therapy, diet and exercise. People with type 1 diabetes need to monitor their blood sugar levels regularly and take insulin or use an insulin pump to keep their blood sugar levels within a healthy range. They also need to make lifestyle changes to manage their condition, such as eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly and avoiding smoking and excessive alcohol con consumption. On November 16, 2021, our favorite company CRISPR Therapeutics and Viasite announced that their VCTX210 is initiating clinical trials in Canada. Since that day, I have been looking at um, uh, getting more news from uh, the clinical trials, but unfortunately not much has come out as yet. The moment we, I get any information, I'll bring them across to you. VCTX210 is an allogenic uh, therapy. So it's basically donor derived, uh, gene edited stem cell driven therapy designed as a best in class treatment for type 1 diabetes and insulin dependent uh, type 2 diabetes. The candidate is designed to replace the beta cells uh, that are lost, in, uh, lost to diabetes and is developed using a CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing approach that involves disruption and in, uh, insertion. VCTX210 produces pancreatic cells that won't be rejected by the patient's immune system but end up differentiating into pancreatic endoderm cells which will then produce insulin. It also has to uh, avoid the uh, autoimmune uh, system uh, that destroyed the beta cells in the first place. Allogenic therapies have an immune response challenge uh, in most cases because the cells are coming from a donor, uh, not from the patient themselves. But VCTX210 is also engineered to evade the immune response to, uh, for increased persistence, which also eliminates the requirement for immune suppression therapy. Then uh, we have uh, Vertex, which is uh, another major company. Vertex has its own VX880 therapy that has successfully demonstrated clinical proof of concept uh, in uh, type 1 diabetes. Uh, Vertex acquired Viasite uh, and that brings uh, VCTX210 into the Vertex fold uh, indirectly. Meanwhile, as VCTX210 uh, goes through the clinical trial, uh, enhancements have been made and uh, two new candidates, VCTX211, is ready to enter clinical trials while VCX212 uh, to address type 1 and type 2 diabetes is on the drawing board uh, preparing for uh, in submission. So friends, uh, you would think that with Vertex taking over uh, um, uh, Viasite, uh, the diabetes market is getting saturated but there is some positive news out there uh, with uh, president biden's effort uh, insulin has, uh, insulin prices come down to 35 dollars and now they're looking at bringing it down to 20 dollars uh, per month so that's going to be a huge huge uh, benefit uh, but from a health perspective uh, if you feel that uh, Vertex has cornered this um, pioneering market and the therapies will become expensive. I have good news and that's the reason why I made this video. Uh, now it gets even better for the patient because despite consolidation by Vertex, we have Texas-based uh, Genprex with GPX002 targeting type 1 diabetes and GPX003 targeting type 2 diabetes. The approach taken by Genprex is different. While existing gene therapies include replacement gene therapy, gene editing and CAR-T for diabetes, Genprex aims to use uh, adeno-associated virus or AAV virus uh, and uh, pan pancreatic uh, intraductal infusions to deliver PDX1 and MAFA genes uh, to the uh, pancreas. Genprex have already demonstrated proof of concept of this approach by their work on eight non-human primates uh, in whom they induced uh, diabetes using a chemical called uh, streptozoxin. Uh, I may not be pronouncing it properly, it's uh, streptozoxin. After that, Genprex used surgical procedures and AAV pancreatic introductal infusions to deliver PDX1 and MAFA genes to the pancreas. 
And then they found that after over a period of month after the procedures, the non-human primates demonstrated uh, decreased insulin requirements, increased C-peptide levels, and increased uh, improved uh, glucose tolerance compared to the ones in the baseline and uh, more insulin positive cells compared to non-treated diabetic controls uh, based on uh, immunohistochemistry. Uh, to cut the story short, uh, if you are to summarize that into a layman's uh, terms, uh, they found uh, that at the end of three months, uh, the uh, treated non-human primates who had um, artificially induced uh, diabetes uh, and then uh, they were given the, uh, the AAV uh, associated therapy were now comparable to the normal uh, non-human primates who never had diabetes in the first place. So it shows that diabetes could be uh, reversed. So that's a very, very encouraging result. Now Genprex has to embark, uh, embark on the long journey of going through the FDA clinical trials and does not pro, uh, I mean, possess any immediate threats to VCTX210. But given the time taken for its therapy to work, I think the clinical trial cycles for Genprex will be short and uh, they may potentially get an advantage uh, coming to the market because if it took 30 uh, sorry if it took three months for uh, non-human primates to show the result and come back to normalcy and if we expect something similar on humans uh, then i think each of those uh, cycles may be maybe three to six months in duration and uh, within a year or 12 months uh, we should have uh, potentially uh, we should be in a situation where there is a bla assuming nothing goes wrong However, there's a bit of word of caution that I would put. I believe the industry is moving away from uh, AAV delivery mechanism. So the risks of issues cropping up in the trials um, do exist. And when it comes to inhuman trials, however, the outlook is quite positive. Uh, but uh, we have to wait and watch how things go. We can't take anything for granted. The conclusion is that apart from insulin prices falling, there will be two competing diabetes therapies in the near future and hopefully in the next decade we will um, treat diabetes and uh, very early and um, that will not only improve the quality of life but also average life expectancy and a lot of savings on lifelong uh, management of diabetes and resultant issues and it will also lead to healthier and happier families and uh, better life outcome and better life expectancies so friends uh, so that was uh, what i wanted to talk to you about today uh, of course, uh, we like to uh, go through life and enjoy everything. Who wants to talk about diseases every day? Uh, but uh, every once in a while, we have to take stock of what's happening uh, because we never know when this knowledge will come in handy. And I'm personally looking forward to uh, these uh, cures coming in place because even though right now I don't have any diabetes, I do uh, find it difficult to control my sweet tooth. I do find it uh, difficult to control my love for food because I'm basically a foodie. And I like to eat whatever I see. Basically, I'm a vegetarian, but I like to eat uh, what I see. And mostly they are fatty and uh, sugary stuff. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this uh, treatment to come in. And uh, it will be uh, it will reduce a lot of stress for me. So with that said, friends, I would like to bring this video to an end. And uh, I would like to thank you all for being loyal subscribers. This channel is continuing to be uh, uh, devoted to genomics. Uh, six days of the week, I bring genomics topics out here. And I'm also working on a plan uh, to uh, take the HIV content away into a purely dedicated HIV channel where I'll have once a week uh, HIV videos the way I'm doing currently for the group out there uh, because we have to address everything. I know you guys are 100% focused on uh, genomic investment and I'm going to make sure that we stick to the original value proposition of this channel and uh, we are not going to take our focus off um, uh, genomic investment and um, uh, please uh, continue to subscribe please continue to watch these videos uh, it's just a matter of time uh, maybe in a month or a month and a half i'd have the new channel up and running for hiv and we'll migrate all the hiv um, audiences into the new channel so it will be excellent experience for them to have a dedicated hiv channel and for you guys also this will be a channel where you get uh, genomic investments and uh, you know just everything related to stock market so with that said, I would uh, look forward to your feedback. It's been almost a year and uh, we have uh, we are reached around uh, 2,700 subscribers at this point of time. I thank all of you. And I think this is a very good opportunity for you all to give me some feedback on how I can improve this channel, especially for our genomic investors. What are you looking for from me? And I really thank you for being tolerant and allowing me to indulge uh, our HIV audience as well. Um, so uh, thanks for sticking by. Thanks for sticking around and looking at my uh, genomic investment videos. 
I promise that uh, we'll have a renewed focus on genomic investment. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.